just give a little bit of a perspective of how we are positioning uh, MYOB Advanced compared to MYOB XO. Um, MYOB XO and MYOB Advanced as two of MYOB's uh, enterprise solutions uh, are both key to MYOB's strategy. Uh, though we are seeing an increase in clients uh, looking at that transition towards a pure cloud, pure SaaS type model, particularly in this sort of COVID-based world where working remotely uh, and having uh, ease of access is, is more important than ever. Um, we do typically see uh, within our uh, EXO client base, uh, within organisations using other uh, on-premise solutions, a number of growing pains that indicate that it might be worthwhile considering MYB Advanced uh, as an alternative solution. And I just wanted to talk through to the, talk to those growing pains uh, before I hand over to Susanna, uh, who's actually going to take us through today's sneak peek. One of the first growing pains that we see is this uh, inadequate visibility of data. Uh, we see um, just that struggle of uh, understanding and putting together all the data, um, analyzing them, and advanced addresses this through a combination of uh, dashboards and on-screen inquiries. Second. Uh, growing pain that we see is around increasing inventory complexity. Um, one of the limitations that we often see for uh, growing uh, warehouse and distribution customers is the need for warehouse specific costing, uh, potential, potentially FIFO based costing models, and of course, bin management. The third pain point that we tend to see is around clients expanding financial management needs. Um, the need for more of a multi-dimensional uh, general ledger with true multi-company and intercompany consolidations, uh, all within a single environment. Moving on, um, the fourth point is a need for more formal approval processes. Uh, advanced introduced support for document and transaction-based approvals. Uh, so you need that sort of extra level of, of governance uh, within an organisation uh, that it supports those requirements. Uh, fifthly, an increase in mobility requirements. Um, Advanced introduces a fully functioned mobile app that really supports that breadth of functionality, as well as uh, the ability to expose uh, customizations and specific business processes that an organization might require. And finally, uh, growing audit and governance demands. Um, introducing a, a security model that basically addresses uh, increased roles, permissions, authorities, and audibility to suit that larger organisation. Without any further ado, I'm going to hand straight over to Susanna, uh, who's going to share her screen and give us a sneak peek today. Yeah, thanks, Stephen, for that introduction. And um, yeah, I think there's sort of a growing tide of interest and Certainly there are some features in advanced that we feel that will um, benefit businesses for the long term. So what we're gonna have a look at today is just a few features that really highlight the differences between the two systems. So sort of we've got an audience of EXO users um, and what we're gonna to achieve today is just to Give you some insights into what you know what are some of the additional features that advanced have has okay so we get, we've got a few areas that we're going to highlight we're going to start off with the dashboard so as soon as the user logs in you're presented with a dashboard and the, the dashboards are assigned um, as the home page for every single user that logs into the system um, a user can be um, Set to have multiple dashboards. So you can see here I've got you know my um, standard login dashboard. Then you've got the ability to toggle between dashboards in this data views area. So I'm just going to jump in and have a look at a finance dashboard. Okay. All right, and so what we can do here is just have different metrics, different tiles running across the top. So relevant information for the key users based on role, based on user, so there's no restrictions. These are all customized based on your requirements. You can have data views, gra graphical representations of certain pieces of information in your database. You can see here, I've got, you know, 
a representation of my open invoices by age, any deferred schedules in the system. So the system can keep track of all of your deferral schedules, both revenue and expense. I can see any unreleased GL transactions here. So it's sort of real pertinent information for the finance role, any unreleased AR invoices. So really just a snapshot of, of what's going on in the system. Similarly, I've got an accounts receivable dashboard. And that allows me to view accounts receivable centric information. You can see I've got an example here of a embedded web page. So if I want to check my customer deposits, for example, I can log in directly from here and see what's going on. You've also got the ability to drill through. So I'm going to, if I can click on this open invoices by age, you'll see here now. This just brings through a listing of all of my accounts receivable in, in what we call an inquiry screen. So what we're seeing here is just a, an on-screen on inquiry. It's got a bit of conditional formatting, so I can see everything here is green. Um, and then, you know, as you keep scrolling through, things turn red, which is just going to highlight to me that um, these invoices are outstanding. So that's, that's the dashboards. Um, let me bring it to your attention some inquiry screens. Obviously what we're seeing here is an inquiry screen. We can drill through to the customer. So I can say, I'll just select blue scope, for example. So interactive screens, and I'm just gonna maximize that. And obviously this is a customer record. I'm not gonna deep dive into this here, but you can see running across the top here, a whole raft of tabs, capturing lots of different, different information. You can see here, I'm able to pull through, now this is customer centric transactions. So I'll be able to see all, my, all of my, in this case, accounts receivable invoices against Blue Scope Steel. And again, this conditional formatting is, popping through there. So nice, nice feature there. A couple of the other inquiry screens that I wanted to bring to your attention was this um, AP detail is a good one. So okay, let me just go to here. Okay. And this is just a, I'm just going to backdate that here. This is just, again, just an inquiry screen. These are customized within the system, basically just joining uh, or allocating or selecting different fields that you want to appear on the screen. So we, we can do that with you. Um, this is showing, you know, all records of all of my uh, accounts payable outstanding with the key fields that I selected here in this date range. What we can do here though, is we're able to actually save this as a pivot. So all of those features that we're used to in Excel have been brought into advanced. So I've just got a simple example here where I'm showing this by supplier now, I've pivot, pivoted this data and I can see here's my supplier and I'm able to see running across the top here, a projection of what's due per supplier. So this is just an example of what's um, possible with this pivoting. Obviously, if you're familiar with that pivoting feature, you can select your rows and columns and go from there. You can see a total running on the bottom there, giving me a total view of what's going, is what's projected to be paid across the financial year. So really strong functionality there, very popular with a lot of our advanced sites, using this more and more as time goes on. Okay, let's shift focus now and have a look at some of the uh, inventory features. So I know um, a lot of our EXO sites do uh, a distribution inventory based, so we thought it would be relevant to show you some of these features. So what I want to point out is three main points. The idea of warehouse specific costing in, in this platform. So um, you might have multiple warehouses set up across a state, city, country. So we're able to cost stock by warehouse in advanced. Um, 
we've got the option of setting FIFO stock tracking. So I know um, that is not available currently with EXO, but obviously that's um, in advanced and we can set that at the stock unit levels, at the stock keeping unit level. And then the other feature I wanna showcase is the bin level tracking in this system. So three points there. So let me start off by bringing up our warehouses. So you can see I'm using this global search. I rely on this very heavily but you've got across the left-hand side here, all of the different functional areas of the system. So much the same as what with EXO has its different business areas. This is sort of located on the side here where you can toggle between payable stock, purchasing receivables. So I kind of skipped over that part. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna open up a warehouse and you'll be able to see here, if I jump into Melbourne, So the warehouse, lots of default information here, you know, do I want to allow on the fly entry or do I want to lock it down so that a particular item can only be transacted against a particular warehouse. I'm able to set default receiving and shipping locations and you can see down here is the location table. Okay, so that is going to be where you outline or specify your um, bin map in your warehouse. Okay, so you can see on my example here, I've got row one, column one, and it just keeps going and going. I'm just flicking across the page here to go through all of my different bin locations. Then what you can do is on the actual individual item, you assign its default warehouse, its, and within that warehouse, its default bin location. So that's done, so the, the bin location specification is done on each warehouse. So you'll notice if I then flick through, go to my next warehouse, I can see Melbourne store can have a completely different location table. Um, Perth again has a different location table. So that is done for each warehouse. I'm gonna go into my stock items now. And here's one I prepared earlier. So let's have a look at my widget. I just thought I'll just make this nice and generic for everyone. Widget one, two, three, you can see here. I can assign a default warehouse. You can see Melbourne default issue from default receipt to. Okay, and that's, that's the def default location that will appear on all of my transactions. If that's blank, then the user will have to select the relevant warehouse, okay? I can see here, I've got price cost information and I've got an average cost here. This item is tracking at average cost. What I will point out here is the valuation method, okay? This is currently set to average, but I can select between or from standard, average, FIFO and specific, okay? So that can be set on the item class, which is the equivalent of primary groups in EXO. You set the default valuation method for this group of items but then on a case-by-case -case basis you can actually change it as well okay the FIFO stock tracking has a lot of other workflows associated with it um, which I, I won't go into today but what I wanted to point out was this here this um, if we circle back to this idea of uh, warehouse specific costing we've got this average cost sitting on the actual item but then if I go into my warehouse details tab I'm able to see, okay, this is the distribution of stock across my warehouses. So in Melbourne one, I've got a thousand units. In Melbourne, I've got 500. If I click on my Melbourne warehouse, I'm able to see warehouse information specific to this item. If I go into my price cost information, I can see that the average cost for this warehouse was $10 for this item. If I click on Melbourne one, I can see that my average cost for the Melbourne one location is $12. So the system, the key takeaway message there is the system will track warehouse specific costing. Okay. All right. 
I'm going to close out of there. All right, so the next item on my list to take you through, so shifting focus again, is the concept of approval processes. Sorry about that. I'll just close there. So advanced really sort of takes the approval workflow to the next level. Um, what we have the ability to do is create function specific approval maps. What that means is that you can have an approval map for your accounts payable, a completely different, sorry about that, a completely different, a completely different set of approvals for your accounts receivable, a completely separate one for your purchases, sales orders, and all of that is done in this approval map configuration area. So I'm just going to show that briefly. Okay. What that means is you can see here I've got lots of different approvals turned on for different parts of my system. So I can have a completely different approval path for my time cards, another one for my expense claims, another one for my purchasing, another one for my AP. So very flexible. Within that approval setting, I can actually have um, a hierarchy established. So I've got an example here whereby in my AP2 level, I've got different rules and conditions associated with what happens if my purchase order is less than $5,000. I can see that you know it requires approval by anyone in the work group of finance manager. So there's a whole range of employees allocated to that work group. Once an AP transaction is recorded in the system against finance manager, then they will receive an alert. Anything second level, anything over $5,000 requires finance manager approval, but also second level approval by, in this case, Jason. So you can see, the flexibility around that. What we can also do is create um, approval or auto automation notifications. So what I'm going to do is go into this here. And you can see here if I was to bring up this notification, what this is basically saying is that anytime a purchase order is entered into the system, automatically send out an email to the relevant approver. So that's where all of these things are configured. Okay. What that means is if I go and enter a purchase order, create a purchase order, And just type in anyone, I'm just going to buy something from Bunnings today. Okay, and if I save that, take that off hold, it's now moving on to a status of a pending approval. System will fire off an email, and you've got your approver details here. We can see. Jane is now going to be receiving that email. <clears throat> okay, shifting gears again. What we want to talk about next is the ability to expand your financial reporting and expand your general ledger dimensions. So what Advanced offers is a multi-dimensional um, sub-account structure. I guess the system calls these sub-accounts. They are basically, uh, they offer you the ability to create different general ledger segments within your financial ledger. Okay, so if we go into our chart of accounts, we'll see here, the system offers the ability just to have stock standard chart of accounts, but underneath your chart of accounts, you're able to create your segments, okay? So what I've got set up here, just as an example, is the ability to have, I've got four levels deep, I can have up to 30, 
not very often we see that, but that functionality is available. What we've got here, I've got four dimensions here, state, region, office, division. Okay, so that's just an example. Obviously, we tailor that to your business requirements. So once you've got that defined, you then set up all of your segment values. So just to give you a, a sense of what that looks like. So underneath state, I can set up all my states. Region, this is my regions across each state. And within that, I've got my different offices. And then of course, division, just kept it very generic there. So the takeaway message here is that when you start transacting in the system, you're then able to assign transactions, AP, AR, journals, any, any transactions to any combination of these uh, sub-account segments in the system. Of course, there's a whole uh, option to enforce valid sub-account strings. So if, you've, if you're in Sydney and you've got um, you know, you've got New South Wales, Sydney, and you've only got an office in Woi Woi, then you can set the system up so that the system will not allow users to enter anything outside of that combination. So we can obviously lock that down and set up restriction groups and, and make sure that the data entry and the data integrity is maintained. So what does that look like? If we have a look at a bill now. Okay, and I'm just going to key in something nice and simple to Officeworks. What that allows me to do is in my document details, it allows me to, in this sub-account sub area, I'm able to select New South Wales. I'm just hitting the F3 on my keyboard. Let's go with Sydney Metro. Let's go with Woi Woi and then Division 1, okay? So, of course, we're not expecting users to be entering that on the fly all the time. We do have the ability to predefine that and you can just search Woi Woi and select Woi Woi. We can also infer the sub-account based on different parameters, who's the logged user, what branch are they assigned to. So, a lot of that can be um, preset in, in, the, in the system. Okay, I'm just conscious of time. So what I'm gonna do is move on to the auditing and governance section. So obviously as a business grows, we find more and more requirements around audit tracking, security, you know, a system like Advanced is far and wide reaching. So there's lots of different modules, lots of different areas. What you're seeing here today is absolutely everything turned on. Obviously I'm administrator access, but we can lock it down user specific. Um, so what I would like to do is just to show you how that works. So one of the really nice features here is this, um, or the ability to view the audit history at a transaction level. So you can see here under my tools, I've got this audit history option. And you can see that this was created, you know, by whom and what time. You've also got the ability to enable this field level audit. So if I went into my supplier, for example, and good old Bunnings, and I went into my audit history, I'll be able to get a snapshot of exactly what's happened. So you can see all the different changes that have occurred and the date that they've occurred. So if I just expand that, I'll be able to see that, okay, Susanna, she's updated the bank account details for this supplier. When that occurred, I will also be able to see that, oh, yep, she's modified the email address as well. So full audit tracking. One of the other strong features in this system is the ability to configure your access rights and the access rights configuration can be done on numerous levels in the system. So what I'm going to show you today is first of all access rights, oops, access rights by role. So 
so this screen allows me to, you know, select a role. So if we have a look at AP admin, for example, and then configure all of the access rights for that role across all the different areas in the system. Okay. Another option is to configure access rights by screen. So this is just a little bit easier for any new set of eyes to wrap your head around. So what I'm going to do here is show you how if I was to scroll down to my payables, and then I'm going to select my bills and adjustments. So we've just been in that screen, so we're all familiar, I'm sure. Okay, and you can see now the bills and adjustments screen, and these are the different roles in the system, and this is their access rights. So this is the screen level access rights. We can even take it a step further. And so if I was to expand bills and adjustments, and then I have a look at my AP document, which is the actual screen that we're entering on. I can then choose, if I was to show you again here. Sorry, wrong screen, payables. You'll notice that up the top here, we've got the button actions and you can see all these actions are grayed out because this is on hold. But the access rights by screen configurator allows me to set who can access the approve, who can access the reject option. So very detailed security and access control within the system. We, we call that field level security. Um, and, you know, some of our clients are using that, especially, you know, if you want to lock down the ability to change bank account details, make that visible, make that read only, all of those options can be configured in one of these access rights screens. Okay, so that sort of brings my presentation to a conclusion. Um, I might hand over back to Stephen. And that's just a bit of a snapshot of of advanced. Um, and yeah, reach out if there's any questions. Thank you.